Right, this morning uh, we have the uh, pleasure of having some graduates uh, from both high school and college in our midst and uh, we want to congratulate them. Um, so uh, the first one is, that we have is Christina Kopnitsky. Could you come forward? I know she loves the spotlight. Just, I just have a couple of life-changing questions for you. Where did you graduate from? Red Bank Valley. Okay. So uh, where are you headed to in the fall? Westminster College. To study? Nursing. Nursing. So uh, in the fall, shall we be starting at Westminster. You just went to this last weekend to orientation. So uh, looking to start in the fall. I have a little gift for you here. I'm going to make you stand up here. You can just go over to the side here. We're going to put the spotlight on somebody else for a second. Someone else who loves the spotlight. I know Allie. <laughs> Allie, you want to let everyone know where you graduated from? Red Bank. Red Bank, okay. <laughs> and where are you headed to in the fall? BC3. BC3, so that's Butler County Community College, is that correct? Okay. I'm not up on my, my lingo from, I'm old now, but uh, congratulations, thank you. And we have Cora Morgan. You can stand on that side, yeah. And where are you graduating from? Red Bank. Red Bank, Red Bank Valley or just Red Bank? Okay. Um, and where are you headed to in the fall? That's a good question. That's a good question, okay, so you'll let us know. All right, well, congratulations, thank you. All right, those are our three high school students that have, are graduating and moving on. Uh, we also have, can turn this down just a little bit. The black hand held, I believe it is. All right, we also have some college graduates. That might be what it is. All right. All right, Justin Skiba. All right. Where did you graduate from? Clarion. Clarion. It's been a while. Yes. Um, and uh, what did you graduate with a degree in? Uh, sports management. Sports management. And uh, you looking to, to get a job anywhere in particular, or see where life takes me and God leads me. Okay. All right. So congratulations. And we have Corbin Hornberger. I have to say, this one snuck up on me. <laughs> where, where did you graduate from, Corbin? Triangle Tech. Triangle Tech, and uh, what was your degree in? Electrical. Electrical. Oh, we needed some electrical work at the Parsman. You're the man, so. Uh, and uh, where are you looking for work, uh, wanting to go? Any uh, plan. All right, anybody that will hire him, that's a good, good attitude. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. And we had uh, two college graduates that couldn't be here this morning. Uh, Maggie McCauley, uh, graduating from Point Park University in Pittsburgh. Um, she was uh, unable to attend this week, but she will be here next Sunday, I believe. Uh, and Doug Gunlock, who was our uh, youth pastor uh, last summer, uh, he graduated from Lancaster Bible College and uh, he was unable to be here this morning. Um, but uh, let's uh, give a, a round of applause for our high school and college graduates. And uh, let's just have a prayer over them. Uh, would you uh, join me in prayer over, over their lives? Lord, we thank you for the graduates that you have blessed us with. And Lord, we just ask that you would be a blessing in turn to them, Lord, as they look toward the future and to what uh, life holds. Father God, may you give them wisdom. May you give them clarity. May you give them guidance. And Lord, may you remain first in their hearts as they seek to, to, to please you in all that they do. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And once again, congratulations. All right, you can be seated now. All right, we've come to our time of praise. Does anyone have a, a praise that they'd like to share? What's God been doing good this week? 
Yes. Kerala. It's the last week of school. The last week of school. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're kind of new to this, but we're like, what are we gonna do with them all day? <laughs> Anybody else with the praise? Yes, Pam. Okay, we had some bluebird boxes. If you didn't hear, I said in the basement, it sounded like you guys were running a jackhammer up here. <laughs> They looked very nice. Uh, Bluebird boxes. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Heather. Emily is headed to states in high jump. Yeah, we had Emily qualifying for states. Um, Elizabeth set a school record in the triple jump. So new school record holder. So we have. Uh, anybody else with a praise? Yes. First prom. Is it making me feel old today? <laughs> Anybody else with a praise? Yes, Ed. I'm just really happy with my kids. I mean, every parent wants their kids to be doing well. We've heard from all three of them this week, and, and they, they just really seem to be doing you know, great. And the baby is fresh. I'm just so happy with my daughter right now. Okay. That's what it was. All right. Does anyone have any prayer requests this morning? Yes, dear. Jane planted his left hearing aid in the soybean field yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else with a prayer request? Yes. Okay, birthday. Yes, Aaron. Cranberry Township or Cranberry Cranberry? Okay. So we'll be praying for that. Anybody else with a prayer request? Yes. Okay. Margaret has a new fashion accessory. Okay. So prayers for Margaret and her foot. Her ankle. Is it foot or ankle? Okay. Yes? And Gordon continues to get better with this part. Okay, Gordon Pants. Yes, Heather. I'm going to pray again with her. Okay. Nice Sunday, next Sunday, yes. Anybody with an unspoken request this morning, just put up a hand. And let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for uh, today. And Lord, uh, we are just uh, filled with uh, your goodness. Lord, we thank you for uh, things about the, the last week of school and the ability to to make bluebird boxes this morning, Lord, for uh, Emily qualifying for states, and, and Lord, for Elizabeth and being able to break the school record and the triple jump, Lord, we, uh, uh, and from things like going to first prom and, and having birthdays and, and, and kids that uh, are in a good place, and, and Lord, we just uh, lift these things up, and Lord, we praise you for your goodness and how you watch over us, even in, in, in all things, and Father God, we thank you for that, and Lord, we just... Uh, uh, bring our request to you, Lord. We think uh, think of Heather's cousin and Lord for his 
album release, Lord, we thank you for uh, how far he's come, and Lord, we just are, are asking you to to uh, help him to do well in his venture, and, and Lord, as he uh, seeks to praise you, uh, Father God, we also uh, think of Gene as uh, uh, they'll be looking to replace a hearing aid, Lord, we just uh, ask that you would be with them, and, and Lord, uh, uh, just allow it to, to not take too long to do this, and Lord, we think of, of George and his work situation, Lord, uh, Lord, we just uh, uh, lift it up to you, and Lord, uh, maybe uh, thank you for an opportunity to come back closer to home. Lord, we also think of Margaret and her foot. Uh, Lord, we just ask for continued healing for it, and, and Lord, uh, it's good to see George and Margaret back uh, this morning, and, and Lord, we thank you for them. Uh, Lord, we also think of Gordon Pence as he continues to uh, recover from the, from uh, this heart surgery. Lord, we just uh, pray uh, for his recovery, and Lord, uh, we just ask again that you would bless us with a, another nice Sunday uh, next week uh, without the rain, and Lord, uh, that you just allow the sunshine on, on to Tractor Sunday, and Lord, for all that are involved with it, Lord, we just lift it up to you. Uh, Lord, we also just uh, lift up all of the unspoken requests, and Lord, ask that you would uh, uh, be with each one that was uh, that was lifted up this morning. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, the children are dismissed uh, for Children's Church. All right, how many of you have seen The Wizard of Oz? Okay, they still show it all the time every year, I think, on, on CBS around the holidays. But uh, you, you remember the line when, when Dorothy wakes up uh, in Oz, what does she say? We're not in Kansas anymore. Okay, I remember, it's been over 20 years, but I still remember the time in college when I could say, we're not in high school anymore. And it was during the first week of classes. And it was in my honors philosophy course where on the first day of classes, the professor handed out a quiz with one question on it. And here's the question as close as I can remember it. You're on a sinking ship with room for one individual left in the only lifeboat. Which individual do you choose? A, a pregnant woman with a family who is not on the boat. B, a person with the cure for cancer but who is elderly and disabled. C, a 35-year-old sailor who knows how to navigate a boat but is a complete jerk. D, a young child who has their entire family still on the boat. E, a rich charity worker or F, yourself. That's not high school anymore. Now, before I read the question in that class, I was someone who was completely confident in my ability to dominate college. I'd done it in high school. It was, it was just easy for me. I don't know why, but high school was easy for me. But after reading this question, I knew that, that it was going to be a new challenge, and I was up to this challenge. And... As we as thought about it and, and wrote our answers and we had to come up with a reason justifying uh, which, which person we would choose, it was a little weird that the professor told us at the end that there was no right answer to this question. And the fact of the matter was that a majority of the people around the world would disagree with your answer. Think about that. This was taking critical thinking to a new level. You see, this was the beginning of a class that I learned from in college, but it was the professor that I disagreed with the most as well. It seemed like every day battle lines were drawn. Has anyone had a college class like that? Where, okay, he came prepared to battle and I came prepared to battle back. You see, this professor was an atheist teaching about theology and religion and philosophy. 
And so he had a little different outlook on life than I had. You see, he got his learning, which was extensive. He got it from classrooms, from books, from science, from, from all of these different places. I, on the other hand, had just come from having the spiritual summer of my life. I had been to a Promise Keeper rally for the first time. I had gone to an international youth convention. I had uh, toured the state with a gospel choir. I mean, I was on fire when I went to college. And I had just begun over the, the, the previous six months to really study the scriptures and to, to go through and highlight things and, and, and to really grow into my own and my faith. And I looked to God first and rejected anything and anyone who did not accept God. You see, we were both smart people. We were both intelligent. We were both wise. But we had different types of wisdom. You see, in the book of James, James talks about this concept of there being two very different types of wisdom in this world. And all of you who have been to college or are off to college, you need to be aware of this because there's one type of wisdom that is the wisdom of this world. And there is another type of wisdom that's completely different, and it's a heavenly wisdom. And we need to find out how we can get as much of that heavenly wisdom into our life as we can. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. And it says this. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in a humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who show, sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. You see, this heavenly wisdom is not just about knowing the things of God and His commands. Heavenly wisdom will make its way into every area of your life, and it will show itself through your actions, through how you live, through how you talk. So what does it look like when we, when we take a look at heavenly wisdom as opposed to earthly wisdom? Before we take a look at that, let's ask the Lord to, to bless our time. Larry, could you open us with a word of prayer? Dear God, what a blessing on all these graduates as, at this time as they move forward in their life and help them serve to deal with that. Amen. Amen. So the first thing that I see from this scripture is that heavenly wisdom leads to humble living. Heavenly wisdom leads to humble living. You know, I was watching a news program a couple of weeks ago and and, and the, there was a bunch of experts, you know, the, as expert as you can get on a news program. And they were, they were sitting around talking about uh, the, the future of our country and the hope that they had or did not have. And, and, and most of them, the majority of the people on this panel did not seem to paint a very good picture of what they thought the future would hold. And many of them looked at the next generation the, the, those of you who are graduating and getting ready to step into the world, and they didn't have a whole lot of faith in your generation. How does that make you feel? You don't really care. You don't really care if they have faith in you or not. But then one of the experts said, I do have hope in this generation if they can figure out this one thing. And when I heard what he said, it kind of took me by surprise because it's not something that you often think about. He says, 
If the next and current generation can learn humility, then we will all be okay. How many of you think that humility is the key to the future? It's not the first thing that pops into our mind when we think, well, what do we need for it to, to be a successful country in the future? But look at what James says. He says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life and by deeds done in humility. And where does humility come from? That comes from wisdom. So if you have humility, you have wisdom. You see, we rarely equate wisdom and good deeds. They're, we think of them as you know, not opposite, but there's not really a connection between them. And the same goes with wisdom and humility. They're two separate things. They, they, they couldn't possibly go together. We almost always think about wisdom in the light of, of how much knowledge we have gained and, and how much we know and how smart that we are and, and by the big words and persuasive arguments that come out of our mouths. But if we look at wisdom in that light, perhaps we're guilty of still living in the area of worldly wisdom. So we need to move beyond that to gain the heavenly wisdom that James talks about it. You see, in heavenly wisdom, wisdom goes hand in hand with how we act on a daily basis. If you are wise, you will do good things for other people who are around you. If you are wise, you will love your neighbor as you love yourself because that's commandment 1B, according to Jesus. If you are wise, you will live humbly because humility comes with wisdom. You see, humility is the ability to look past your own wants and your needs. And heavenly wisdom, when it comes, it knows that it's not about winning arguments and sounding smart and having knowledge in your head. Heavenly wisdom has everything to do with you dying to yourself and living for the Lord and for other people. Now, the world would say that's a terrible concept. Because you have to look out for yourself. No one else is going to, right? But God tells us it's necessary because of what He has done for us. Your good deeds, your humility, the amount of those that you have in your life will tell you how much heavenly wisdom that you have. So the more good deeds, the more humility that you have, the more heavenly wisdom you will have. So is your everyday life filled with unselfish acts for other people? Is your life filled with humble interactions with the people that you meet? If so, you have large amounts of heavenly wisdom. But if you're only living for yourself and looking out for your own needs and interests, you may be in danger of still living in earthly wisdom. So heavenly wisdom leads to humble living. Also, heavenly wisdom is, has distinct characteristics from earthly wisdom. Let's uh, compare them by using James' words starting in verse 14. It says, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. So James is pretty clear. He lays out a clear picture of what the person looks like who is full of earthly wisdom and what the person looks like who is full of heavenly wisdom. So let's first take a look at the earthly wisdom person. This person has bitter envy in their lives. What does that mean? It means that they'll get worked up really quickly when you have a disagreement with them. They'll get heated. And, and it, uh, the, the words here literally means to boil over with anger or envy. To boil over with bitterness towards people. And you can see it all the time 
A person with earthly wisdom often looks down their noses at the other people who aren't as smart or intelligent as they are. They just, they have, they are filled with this bitter envy. They're also filled with selfish ambition. You see, people with worldly wisdom are only interested in building up their own selves, building up their own empires and gaining followers. They don't care about the feelings of others. They care only about their own and what is good for them. And so they're, they're more likely to trample over people than to truly love people. People with worldly wisdom deny the truth. Do you ever have an argument with someone and they know the truth and you know the truth and yet they're still arguing their position even though it's not truthful? And that frustrates me to no end. But this, is, this explains it correctly and, and in a way that we can understand that person is still living in an earthly wisdom point of view. Because they don't care about the truth. Their, their philosophy is the ends justify the means. So it doesn't matter how we get there, if I have to lie, if I have to tell a falsehood, if I have to believe a falsehood, as long as we get to where I want to be, they deny the truth. That is earthly wisdom. And also, a person with earthly wisdom is full of disorder and evil practice. You ever notice that, that they don't care about the rule or the order of things? They just want what they want and they don't care they don't care about the status quo. That would be a good way to describe someone with earthly wisdom. But those with heavenly wisdom, what do they look like? First of all, they're pure, according to James. Heavenly wisdom seeks first and foremost to live a pure, a holy, a clean life. And it's, it's putting yourself in a position where you don't want anything to get between you and God. And so you live there. That's heavenly wisdom. Also, someone with heavenly wisdom is peace-loving. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But a person with, with heavenly wisdom seeks to have peace in any conflict. Someone with heavenly wisdom is considerate. You ever have an argument with someone and, and in the end of the argument you like that person more than at the beginning of it? And they just, you wanted to be mad and keep being mad, but for some reason they wouldn't let you allow you to become mad. Because they're considerate about your own feelings when you have heavenly wisdom. A person with heavenly wisdom is submissive. They don't have to always get their own way. They can agree to disagree and they don't have to, to hit you over the head with their own point of view. They make their point and they can even give up and, and say, I don't think you're correct, but go ahead and do it the way that you want to do it. A person with heavenly wisdom is full of mercy and good fruit. This comes because they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they exhibit the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and the kindness, the good, goodness the faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that come with the Holy Spirit. A person with heavenly wisdom is impartial. They don't play favorites. Each person that they come in contact with is their favorite. And they are sincere and genuinely care about you. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a difference between a person with earthly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. But James has one more sentence for us. He brings out this idea of peace again. In verse 18, it says, Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. I almost hardly can watch the news anymore. Anybody else getting there? Yeah, it just seems like it's, all right, we're going to have one talking head that believes one thing. We're going to have another talking head that believes another. They're going to yell at each other for 10 minutes, and then we're going to move on to the next door. And that, does that boil it down to about where, where we live at? How many of them go into that news program wanting to make peace or be at peace with the other person? 
They're only there to blow the eight to make their opinion known and to show how smart they are. Or politicians, when they get on the floor to debate, how many of them care about the truth? Or what's best for their constituents? No, they just want to argue with the other side and win the debate. This is what's gotten our country into the state it's in. We need to recognize worldly wisdom and replace it with heavenly wisdom. What is the goal according to Scripture? Paul writes, As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That's found in Philippians. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That's the goal. That's heavenly wisdom in actions. And so that means that you're going to have to make concessions for peace. That means you're going to have to give up your own way for peace sometimes. That's going to mean that you're going to have to go out of your way even when you are right to make peace. Because heavenly wisdom having that means that you are seeking peace in all instances of your life. You know, I used to think that in my arguments with my philosophy professor, professor that I was using heavenly wisdom and he was using worldly wisdom. But you know what? We were both guilty of using worldly wisdom. Mine had a spiritual angle to it, a spiritual connotation to it. But I didn't care how I made him feel. I just wanted to win. Anyone else get that way in arguments? How many of you want to win? Come on. Elias and I are the only two. But I didn't care how arguing with him made him feel. I just wanted to win. We were both guilty of relying on worldly wisdom. And if I had to do it over again, I'd want to learn more about, about why he was the way he was. What made him become an atheist in the first place? Why, why was he so hostile toward the things of God? I would not seek out the confrontation, but if you're using worldly wisdom, you'd seek out the peace. You see, we've gained a tremendous amount of information over your 12 years, or some of you 15 years, 16 years, whatever it's taken you to get through high school or college. You need to be commended for that. But the goal is not just to achieve more and more knowledge, more and more information. The goal is for you to achieve wisdom. And James lays it out for us. There are two kinds. There is earthly wisdom, and there is heavenly wisdom. So are you going after the right kind? Do you fill your, fill your days with humble actions and good deeds for others? Because at the end of life, those are the things that really matter. Are your words and actions marked with the purity, truth, and peace and the fruit of the Holy Spirit? That's a sign of heavenly wisdom. Do you seek to win every argument or do you seek the peace? If you answer yes, then you have the wisdom of heaven on your side. And there's no telling where that can take you. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for those who are graduating, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you would instill them with a heavenly wisdom. Lord, teach them humility. Teach them the value of good deeds done out of love for you and other people. Lord, show them the characteristics of someone who is truly wise. And Lord, show them how to be at peace with everyone. Lord, we thank you for the heavenly wisdom that lives against so much of what this world is trying to tell us is true wisdom. We thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Let us stand and close this off.